In the race of life, life's not gonna give you a glass of water when you're thirsty. The next challenge is usually the toughest thing out there. The thing I yeah. don't wanna do the most. There's not much to figure out. The only thing to figure out is this. And everybody has a different equation. Top 10, I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life, like nine to the nine. For my top 10, top 10, top 10, nine to the nine. This one's for my top 10. Need motivation? Watch Top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel is created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So get ready to live on your own terms, learn from your past failures, and never forget how badass you are with David Goggins and my take on his top 10 rules of success to give you the confidence, motivation, and belief that you need. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Live life on your own terms. In the race of life, life's not going to give you a glass of water when you're thirsty. And I realized that. And once again, people are like, my God, your life is horrible. It's not. Yeah. This is how I live. This is how I live. This is what I want. I don't judge anybody. This is how I live. And if, there, if there's not people like me in this world, with this kind of mentality. It's not be like David Goggins, go run 200 miles. Take something from this. Take something from this. Remember where I started from. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go where I went. Right. I went this <clears throat> far because I started opening different doors to the cellar in my brain. My God, is this possible? Oh my God, that's possible, this possible. I started opening different compartments you can leave them shut. I don't care. Rule number two, never forget how badass you are. I'm looking at all these different races and one comes up, number one, the hardest race in the world, Badwater 135. 135 mile race through Death Valley. I'm like, that sounds nuts. <laughs> but I didn't, but it didn't describe that it was a, like a couple day race. I'm thinking, okay, that has to be like a seven day race. Right. Cause I don't know people who run like that. So I end up calling Chris Kostman up. Chris Kostman is the race director of Badwater. And he lives out here in California. And he's like, hey man. I'm like, hey Chris, I call him up in the first conversation. I actually have all the emails in my book yeah. for me, him going back. He's, he's a stickler, man, yeah. I'll tell you that. So I call him up, I say, hey man, I'm gonna do this race. He's like, have you ever run 100 miles before? And I'm like, no. He goes, well to get my race, you have to do a 100 mile race and you gotta do 100 miles in 24 hours or less. Mm -hmm. There was only two more races I could do before the deadline dropped. And so I'm like, he goes, you live in San Diego, right? I'm like, yeah. This was Wednesday. <laughs> I call him up on a Wednesday morning. He goes, well, there's a race on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's, it's called the San Diego One Day at um, Hospitality Point in San Diego where you run around a one mile track for 24 hours and see how many miles you can get. So I'm like, it, man, this guy's kind of calling me out. I'm, I'm gonna get this shit done. I'm a SEAL, I'm a badass. Been through Ranger school and shit. I got this. Hardest thing I did in my entire life, dude, was this one race. So I go. Harder than, than getting through. Hell yeah. Wow. I was not prepared okay. at all. So I go, I sign up for the race. I show up, I'm this big bodybuilder looking guy. Yeah. Shirt off, black hat on. You know, and I'm, I set out. So every mile, I'm gonna see this blue lawn chair. I had Ritz crackers and Myoplex. That was my nutrition, man. Yeah. No water, no nothing. No Plex. water? No. Ritz crackers <laughs> and Myoplex, dude. Come on. I, you know, cause I never drink water on runs and shit. I didn't know about all this shit. So I go out there and I'm running. I get through 50 miles. I'm gonna cut to the chase because I detail it really well in yep. the book. Um, I get going. I sit down at mile 70, mm. and buddy, I hadn't sat down yet. And I sit down and everything falls the apart. Literally, man, I'm like peeing blood down my leg. I have some crap coming out of me, and I got 30 miles to go. And I'm in the worst shape of my entire life. 
And so I won't get too deep into mm. it, man, but I end up going back through my cookie jar and I talk about, you know, my, my, my cookie jar is basically something I invented about we forget how badass we are when we're suffering because mm. our mind just stays right there in suffering. The cookie jar is a reminder. Mm. You know how your mom used to have the cookie jar. You, you, know, you don't know what kind of cookie you're going to get, mm -hmm. but it may be a oatmeal raisin, maybe a cho chocolate chip meat because, you know, she's dumped some in that you used to grab one and go. Yeah. So my cookie jars, the things I've accomplished, failed at, didn't fail at, just, just kept on grinding through. So I take this one second, I calm down, so I realize, okay, man, I gotta be able to just stand up first, come all dizzy and lightheaded, and I go through this process. And I said, I might quit, but not yet. Mm. I go, this is the worst shit in my life. So I said I might quit, because when you're not gonna quit something, you got 30 miles to go, your mind's spazzing. Like, mm. I'm up. Like, I, like 30 miles is a long way to go, mm -hmm. just fresh. Mm -hmm. I've already gone 70, I'm the worst shit in my life. I'm like, okay, so I, I'm giving my mind some space. Because if you don't give it space, it's just gonna freak out. Okay. So I'm saying, like, you know what, I'm gonna quit, but let me just sit here for a second and drink some water. Now, now I'm drinking water. I, I have my crew going over to get some you know, nutrition, some, mm -hmm. some food for me, I'm getting better. So now I stand up, I'm like wow, I'm able to stand up now. Because I wasn't able to, I was all lightheaded. And I'm going on this track, and I get to mile 81, and I wasn't gonna make the time, because I was moving slow. You're behind time. Way behind. Okay. And this is, the, this is the craziest thing in the world. And I finished you not. I'm in the worst shape of my entire life, ever. I've never even been close to this, again, never. Mile 81, I'm not gonna make the time as slow as I was moving. And when your body and mind connect, and I think this is the only time I've ever done this, okay. you become a cyborg. Hmm. I end up running 20 miles at about a 10, 15 mile mm. and get done with that race. I did 101 miles in 19 hours and six minutes. And to this day, and I don't, and I don't detail it well with you, but in the book I do, I learned more from that 19 hours and six minutes than I did in all three hell weeks, oh my God. ranger school, and this is months. Ranger school is 60-something days. Hell week and, and, and all the buds is six months. I was in, I was in buds for like 18 months. Mm -hmm. You know, I went through Delta Force selection twice. You know, pull-up records. I learned more in that one race that I wasn't prepared for. That 19 hours brought me from utter misery, happiness, failure, success, depression. I went through every emotion in the world in 19 hours. Rule number three, learn from every failure. Most people who are failing are trying their ass off. Yep. Most people who are failing are being criticized by people who haven't attempted what you're even trying to fail at. So what I'm failing at, so after I, p I did 2,500 pull-ups my first time yep. going for the record. Yep. You know I mean? People were criticizing me. People who, sitting there eating chips who, who on the couch. Even do a pull-up. Exactly. Look at your audience uh -huh. who's criticizing you, uh -huh. first of all. Yep. They're not even in your world yes you don't even talk to me yep block them out that's the first thing yep the second thing is through failure you get all the answers you get all the lessons all of them yes they're all there yes so i was able to go back through and say okay this happened this happened this was wrong this was wrong this is wrong so i don't even look at failure like i don't even call it failure yeah i i, I don't because i don't look at it like oh my god i failed no i look at okay like trying to invent the light bulb I'm afraid to know what, what, what's failure. I'm trying to invent a fucking light bulb. Yeah. I'm trying to break 4,020 pull-ups. Mm -hmm. That's failure? Yeah. Anything you do along that way is amazing. Rule number four, figure out your mind. On this journey in life, there's a lot of people who are fucked up right now. On the journey, there's always be that in the sewer you came from that's grabbing at your ankle as you're leaving that sewer. That's going to drag you right the back down because you figured it out. Mm. They're not willing to figure it out. There's not much to figure out. Mm. The only thing to figure out is this. Gosh. And everybody has a different equation. Mm. My equation is different than yours. Mm -hmm. My equation was very different than most people's. Also, if you want to have more motivation and self-love, check out my 254 series. They're free. The links to join are in the description below. You can outwork anybody, mm -hmm. no matter how badass they are. Everything yeah. I didn't want to do is what got me to where I'm at today.
What if I can become someone that no one thinks I can be? And just that, just me talking about that, I have the hair going up on my arms. Rule number five, practice what you preach. I have to live what I say. So when you come up from a world of used to lie a lot, and my big thing is facing all this crap, I cannot tell you something I have not done. Right. Because why? When you start to formulate this character, this code of ethic, this ethos that you live, not anybody else, it's your own. I cannot tell you something that I haven't done. Why? Because it will haunt me. You are now drinking the Kool-Aid. A lot of people write books on self-help, mental toughness, all this crap. Half of them are living up to that standard. Mm -hmm. Half of them are living up to that standard. You have to be able to practice what you preach. It has to be what you are. That's why when people say, my God, when you speak on stuff, it's so passionate. Because you're making me relive my life. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's not a comfortable yeah, life. Yeah. This life was made. This life was earned. Yeah. And if people like it, great. If not, so be it. Rule number six, get back up repeatedly. I learned to visualize in my life by watching Rocky. And mainly Rocky one. I love them all. But like the Rocky three running on the beach scene, all that. But Rocky won 14th round at least a thousand times. What about you? No sh <laughs> At least 20,000 times. <laughs> Why is that? Yes. Um, I've dissected that two minutes and some seconds, two minutes and 13, 14, 15 seconds, at least 20,000 times. Mm -hmm. When I did the pull-up record, and I finally broke it. Took you did, three times. Yep, did 4,030 in 17 hours. I listened to one song for 17 hours, and it was going the distance. Oh, God. Two minutes and 13, something, 14 seconds. On it, a loop. On a loop, but first, the guy, this guy named Nandor, he kept playing out loud for everybody. And I brought my own little iPad. I don't ever listen to music, but I was failing so many times at this record, I had to go to that place. So I said, you know what, I don't wanna bore you all anymore with this same song, because I, I had a crew of people there filming it, mm. you know, because it had to be documented. Mm. So I didn't want them to be there for 17 hours listening to the same song, kinda, mm. it bore them. So I put in my ears, listening the whole time. But I'm gonna go a step further. In that round, when Rocky gets knocked down, and Mickey's saying, stay down, stay down, and he's getting up, Apollo Creed thinks that he knocked him out. So I have this thing called taking souls, okay? And when you see Apollo Creed turns around, arms in the air, I got him. Do you see when he turns around yes. and he sees, because Apollo Creed knows I was this dude up. Yep. He kept coming after me and I finally knocked him down. When he turns around and looks at Rocky and, and he says, and watches him get up, and Rocky gets his gloves and motions him to come to him, yes. Apollo puts his head down and just goes like this. It's not so much Rocky getting up, that's big for me. Apollo Creed's face yep. became every that verbally and non-verbally looked at me, because you know that look they give you when you think that, you know, mm -hmm. they may not tell you you're a piece of shit and mm -hmm. you're nobody, mm -hmm. but they look at you almost like, you poor thing. Mm -hmm. I got them all. Mm -hmm. I got them all on that phone. You know that, that, that little wheel you have with, with everybody's name on it and phone numbers and shit? Yeah. I got them all in that motherfucker in my head. Mm -hmm. And I spin that bitch every day. And I know right now whether you hate me, love me, I'm a dick, I'm a this, I'm a that, whatever you want to think, I made it. Mm. And I know all of you are looking just like Apollo Creed did, because I just kept getting the fuck up. And all I wanted people to do in my life, I don't care about the money, I don't care about the fame, I don't care if, any, I don't care if all my followers go away tomorrow. Mm. I wanted a lot of people mm -hmm. that doubted me to look like Apollo Creed did in that 14th round because I got back up repeatedly. Mm -hmm. And when you keep on getting back up like that, no matter how strong the person is that's beating the shit out of you, they eventually look at you and say, you know what, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. And I just want people to be tired. <laughs> just be tired. I want to make you tired.
mm. because I just continue. So that's what that movie did to me. That, uh -huh. that movie changed how I looked at life. Me too. It did. Rule number seven, eliminate hate. Did you cast out negative people in your life or just use it as fuel to do even better? And do you still have relationships with energy sucking vampires? There's no relationship with, so energy people that suck the life out of me, yeah. you're gone. That's a total Tom Ferry, like energy sucking vampires, right. avoid those people, right? You're gone, but this is yeah. the thing about it, though. Yeah. You can't use it for fuel either. Yeah. You have to get that hate. You can't move forward yeah. with hate. Yeah. You can't. I try to do it. Yeah. I used to have energy and all that stuff, but what happens is when you're in a horrible situation in life, that hate and anger, yeah. for some reason you can't remember it because that place you're at is so disgusting, you forget about them. Yeah. So you might just let go of the shit anyway. Rule number eight, train your mind constantly. I had this class that they designed. Eat an elephant one bite at a time. Self-talk, visualization, arousal control. It's all great. It's all great. It has to be a lifestyle. Yeah. You work on mental callousing on a daily basis. Because you're, even though your brain, your mind, you're like, like your brain isn't a muscle so much, you will lose it. You will lose the ability to suffer in the worst of times if you come out of it for too long. If you can lift 315 pounds and you stop going to the gym for a month, I guarantee you won't be able to pick the same weight up again. Mm. Rule number nine, choose the toughest challenges first. How do you pick the next challenge? The next challenge is usually the toughest thing out there. The thing I yeah. don't want to do the most. Yeah. So my challenges come off of, what am I afraid of? Yeah. What am I kind of cowering from? What, what am I looking at saying, mm -mm. Yeah. Because we all know what it is. It's in the back of your mind. It kind of floats back there. It's like, you know, for some of us, it's as simple as that. I don't want to get up and run today. Yeah. That's what's next. Yeah. So for me, it's always, what am I not wanting to do? Yeah. And that's how I continue to grow. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is compare yourself against yourself. Oh, I got a great question today. Question was, I'm working my ass off, but I'm not seeing results. What we do is we go on to social media and that poisons us. We have all these fit models that we're taking these snapshots of. Snapshot of these great legs, great ass. If you're a guy, big arms, big shoulders, big chest, all this bullshit. Take that middle snapshot. We start working our ass off for weeks, for months. We don't see results so we get all pissed off. Those results are there. But what you've done is you take that middle snapshot and you're not seeing the results of that fitness model, that person you want to be. Half of us don't even have that in our bodies to be looked like that. So what you want to do is take a mental snapshot of how you looked before and where you're at now. That's what you want to do in life. Compare yourself against yourself. Don't get poisoned by bullshit. Stay hard. Now I've got a special bonus clip from David on how to stop focusing on negativity that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching a video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one, what's the tough challenge that you need to take on first? Number two, how will you remind yourself how badass you are? And number three, where do you need to eliminate the hate from your life? And if you made it this far in a video and you commit that you're gonna take action, we don't just watch videos here, we do something, give me a hashtag believe down in the comments below because I want to celebrate you. So years ago, I was scared to death to fly. So my mentality is this, if you're scared of something, learn about it, figure it out to overcome it. So I went out and got lessons on how to fly. I'm up in the plane with a pilot we had some bad turbulence, and I freaked out. And the pilot said, there's one thing you can't ever do up here, and that's forget to fly the plane. In life, that's a true statement. We have hard times, we hit turbulence, we fail, we fall on our ass, we have divorces, we have all kind of bullshit that happens. And we sit there and think about that one issue, and it, it's all we think about. And we forget to fly the plane, the plane is us. We forget to focus on everything in life, our habits, our goals, our destination. And we end up failing.
If you want 10 more rules from David Goggins, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Self-talk without real work is just a lie. Yeah. So my self-talk is me reminiscing back on the struggle to get to this moment.